the people that show up. Yeah, good. Thanks. Thanks for starting the recording, Janet. So, um, what we're going to do is uh, hopefully um, not going to take us too terribly long. I'm just going to say a few things here uh, at the start, a few introductory comments, um, and then each of the students I've asked you guys to just um, very briefly tell us what you're thinking right now. What what um, you're particularly interested in, what you may be thinking about for project ideas. Uh, I appreciate that some of you have um, pretty well developed ideas already. Some of you probably have no idea at all and um, both of those uh, cases are fine. We just want to um, start to get a better idea of what you guys are thinking about. We want you all to hear what the other students are thinking about to try to figure out how the pieces can best fit together. Um, and so that will be the bulk of what we do and then at the end we're just going to have kind of general discussion. People can ask questions about um, packing, you know, what to bring, what not to bring, um, things like that. So I'm going to go to the next slide now and um, dive into just a few of these um, general uh, well, intro comments. Um, and this slide has some information. You don't have to try to scribble it all down. I'll send this slide around. Um, and so I'm just going to quickly tick through these first things. Uh, and number one, health related stuff. Uh, we've had cases in the past where um, sort of right before we all leave, somebody gets sick um, and they hop on a plane and they come along with us and then more people get sick. So if anyone's not feeling well now, uh, please let us know. Um, you can send an email to Dave Young, the physician who will be with us. You can also CC me. Um, so we just like to keep on top of that. So uh, I guess in addition to any sort of acute things that may be going on right now with cold or flu or anything like that, um, also if any thing has fundamentally changed since you had your physical, you know, a few months ago, whenever that was, also let us know. So let's, let's uh, you know, we want everyone to be healthy. We want to uh, keep track of everyone along the way, including, uh, you know, starting right now. Um, number two on that list, uh, we want to know if there's anybody out there who has not yet received their passport with the visa in it. So, um, yeah, raise your hand or shout out or something. Uh, if you haven't, certainly send us an email if you haven't. But if anyone here right now hasn't received their passport, let us know because it's my understanding, at least, that the travel agent or the uh, visa agent in New York has sent them all out. So not hearing anything, it sounds like at least all everyone on the call has uh, has what they need. So that's great. Um, the next two items there, I have um, contact information both for me and for Kate. Um, it's my the first thing listed there is my cell phone, and it's a cell phone that will work both in the U.S. and in Russia, or, or at least in Moscow. Um, and then there's a couple of um, contact numbers for Kate Bolagina right right below that. Um, and it's particularly important, you know, if we have people flying in from all different directions, converging on JFK Airport in New York, and the plan is that all of us uh, are going to be on the same flight from New York to Moscow. And if somebody's flight gets delayed. Uh, we want to know about it. We want to know when they're going to get into New York, and then we want to know what alternative flights uh, you know they've arranged for getting from New York to Moscow. So send us text. Try to call us. Call Janet Allen, the, the travel agent, and basically, you know, I've told her to get get you to Moscow any way you can in time to catch our flight the next day to Yakutsk. Um, so far, you know, knock on wood, we've never had anyone that didn't make it to Moscow on time. We try to have relatively long. Uh, um, connection time, so hopefully that won't be a problem. But with a group as big as ours, you just never know. So I think those are the important contact numbers that you need uh, in case there is a problem. Um, and I guess the final thing on that list is just um, when when you do, for those of you that are traveling from the states, when you arrive in New York, um, assuming you're not getting there eight hours earlier or something, but you know two or three hours if before the departure time, if you're in the airport, just head to the gate, whatever gate that is that are for our flight to Moscow, and we'll start uh, we'll start getting together in a group and counting heads and 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 seeing seeing who we have. Okay, are there any questions about this introductory stuff? I'm just going to pause for a minute and raise your hand or speak out. Um, yeah, feel free to ask any questions or any comments about this. I'll turn off my mic so if people want to talk, they can. Okay, I don't 
see any questions. Um, although I do hear some dinging Hi, Max. Oh, Sorry, Max. I, I have one question. Um, is there any, uh, can we use any of those phone numbers? Like, can we use Kate's phone number if, say, someone in the U.S. had to get a hold of us once we're actually in Chersky? Uh, do we have any uh, means of contact that, uh, when we're there? Yeah, that's a good question, Dave. Um, we'll, I'll send out another information sheet with some additional contact information, both sort of for a phone number at the station. I'll also send out a satellite phone number that people can call and uh, with some luck be able to reach us at the station. Um, you know, th there's also email. So um, basically what you should tell your parents or whoever that, you know, in the event of some emergency back home or something where somebody really needs to get in touch with you, send emails to me and Kate and you. Um, try calling. You can try calling my cell phone number. And it, in some places in Cherokee, it actually works. Um, we'll also provide you again with the um, the, uh, uh, the phone number of the station, and I can give you the. Uh, I sh I'll also we should also provide the um, email of Nikita Zimov, one of the people at the station. So we'll, we'll give several options. None of them are perfect, but um, together um, there should be some way to get through to us. All right. Any further questions? If uh, if so. Yell them out. Uh, if not, let's move on to what I think will be the heart of this thing. And so, hopefully, the slide has advanced. Um, oh yeah, one. I, I did just have another thought. I, I see Tom Quinn, who I think may be on the call now. I'm not sure. He has put together an emergency contact list. Um, I just got the email. I saw I got the email just a hour or two ago. I'm not sure exactly when. I haven't looked at it yet. But yeah, it could be that all that information is there already. All right, so anyways, um, hopefully you all see a slide that has all 16 people listed um, alphabetically, um, starting with sort of the new undergraduate students, then the returning undergrads, and then the grad students. So um, what I want to do is pretty quickly go through here, just starting at the top of the list, um, and have you each, you know, just say what your name is, where you go to school, even though it's on the list, it'll say it again, and then just very briefly, you know, a few words about what you're thinking about in terms of projects. And again, don't feel bad if you really don't have too much of an idea right now. That's not unusual and that's not a bad thing. Uh, we're really just, again, trying to see, you know, see where the ideas are and uh, how the pieces may fit together and so on. So um, is Varvara here? I don't think she is. Um, I don't think our first person is. is and Sam, I, well, this is going fast because I don't think Sam's here either. Uh, but Miles is, I believe. Uh, so I'm going to turn off my mic and uh, Miles, if you could just take over for again just a minute or two and tell us a few things. Thanks, Max. Um, so I'm Miles. I'm from Western Washington University, which is up in uh, the northwest corner of Washington. Uh, I just graduated in March. Um, so all of my research experience, kind of up to now, has been marine-based. Um, did some like uh, ocean acidification stuff and then some like invert stuff. Um, so I guess if like my interest right now would be kind of moving up into the estuaries and the rivers and seeing kind of how the carbon chemistry works uh, from upstream down into the ocean. Um, I don't really have any specifics ironed out yet, but uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. We'll see how it all works out. Um, And that's that's really it. <laughs> that's great, Miles. That's perfect. That's just kind of what we want to hear. So let's um, continue down the list and uh, turn it over to Alfonso. Uh, hi, everybody. So I'm Alfonso Dominguez, attending Northern Arizona University at the Yuma Branch Campus. That's the southwesternmost part of uh, Arizona, bordering on. Um, right on the corner of the U.S. and California and Mexico border. So we deal a lot with, um, as far as our interests uh, go, we deal a lot with uh, where I work at the U uh, U.S. Geological Survey. We deal a lot with uh, waters and and um, mostly with uh, stream flow, but we do, we do some water quality stuff too. So a lot of my interest involves kind of what Miles said with uh, as far as uh, the carbon chemistry within the within the river. 
And that that would be interesting to me too. I also have um research research experience with uh, ecology and uh, so a lot of some of the things that uh, that Mike Lawrence is is um is spreading what might be some uh, an interest to me as well. But so far it's up for grabs for me, so um still trying to you know bring it all together. Well, for me that's it in a nutshell. I'll leave it up to you guys. Thanks, Alfonso. That's great. Uh, let's go to Kelsey. Hey, hi, I'm Kelsey. Uh, I go to UC Santa Barbara. And um, up till now, I've been doing research in a soil lab, so I really haven't had that much experience with um, rivers or any water, really. And um, But I'd like to get more involved with how soil interacts with, um, with rivers in an ecosystem. And I was thinking about looking at um, like the ability of carbon from soil to river to ocean, um, uh, like through from the DOC to in the permafrost to the streams, um, and maybe the microbial communities um, that go go along with that. But I'm I'm still kind of trying to hone in on what exactly I want to do. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm really excited. Thanks, Kelsey. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, I don't think Peter's here. Is, is Peter here? He might actually be in Alaska now doing some field work, <laughs> or he was until recently, I think. So how about Maddie? If Peter's not here, Maddie, take over. Hi, I'm Maddie LaRue. Um, I'm from Sleepy Hollow, New York, and I go to Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, and I'm interested in studying the impact of organic, inorganic nutrients on microbial metabolism. So it kind of goes along with some stuff that people have been saying. But um, I'm still trying to work out my project details. But hopefully we can do some sort of collaboration. Thanks, Maddie. That's good. Um, now, Vasily, and I guess Vasily, we have him listed here as an undergraduate student. but. Um, I think he's more of a master's student, although there's not really a direct conversion between, you know, what, what they call things in Russia and what we, what we call them here. But he's somewhere, either a master's student or somewhere in between. So anyways, Vasily, take over. Hello again. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, so I really got my master's degree a week ago. And now I still in Moscow State University, stay. And so, what about this project? Uh, I work in with atomic force microscopy, and for me, is uh, very interesting to study mechanic properties of uh, natural organic matter uh, from uh, permafrost, uh, particularly, and to compose uh, these properties for. Matter from permafrost and as usual, I'm getting my trap. So, uh, that's great, Vasily. Thanks for that. Um, let's see, where are we? Uh, Lindsay, you're next. All right. Um, I don't really have any brilliant ideas, unfortunately. Mostly, I don't want to do invertebrates. That's about all I know of what I want to do this summer. Um, so doing terrestrial stuff would be cool. Oh, I'm from Western Washington University. I was supposed to say that to introduce myself. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I don't really know what to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, so terrestrial stuff would be cool. That's about the extent of my ideas so far. Sorry, I'm not very helpful. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get off now. No, that's great. Thanks, thanks, Lindsay. I mean, it, it is helpful to, you know, hear what people think, are thinking, even if they're not sure what they're thinking. And again, that's totally fine at this point. Um, is Brandy Joe on? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Hi, I'm Brandy Joe Petronio. I'm from the University of Florida. And 
last summer I worked with Peter Ganslin, the other undergraduate, and Heather Alexander, the postdoc in Alaska. And we did all terrestrial stuff, and we are going to continue to do terrestrial stuff this summer. And Peter and I have talked about doing some descriptive moss studies, um, looking at basically a, a gradient of forest densities in a large forest and figuring out uh, how the different densities affect mosses and what kind of mosses are there. And that's basically all we've talked about so far, because he's still in Alaska. Thank you. Thanks, Brandy Joe. That's great. Um, Seth, take over. All right. Can you hear me? Great. Okay. I, I'm Seth Spawn from St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota, and uh, I have some experience uh, studying uh, gas fluxes from both streams and lakes, and as, as well as ecosystem metabolism. Um, and I'd like to look at some of those similar things in Siberia. One idea that I had was to to look at um, the convective influences of turbulence and gas flux from thermocarst lakes, um, which can't really be described by wind mixing models. And so I think it'd be kind of cool to um, to in, to apply uh, a surface renewal model um, that that incorporates. Uh, convection into into these lakes, and then maybe be able to predict those flexes based on pretty easy to measure physical variables. Uh, so yeah, I like physics, um, I like chemistry, and I hope to do something with that in water in Siberia. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Jess. That's excellent. Let's go to Eric. Hi everyone. I'm Eric. I'll be a senior at Colgate this fall. Um, most of my past research experiences have dealt with plant physiology, specifically ferns, but I'm hoping to branch out a bit this summer and explore different areas. Um, I have a bit of experience with GIS and I really enjoyed the work I've done with that. So I'm hoping that I might be able to be part of a project um, utilizing GIS remote sensing. Um, so there are a couple of projects based on the project ideas sheet that I'm interested in. Um, one being the effect of fire on ecosystem carbon pools. Um, and then also spatial and temporal variability in permafrost using um, the electrical or resistivity energy. Um, but that being said, I'm open to pretty much any number of research areas or project ideas. So yeah. Thanks, Eric. And uh, yeah, thanks to all who have gone already. This 12 people, or I don't know, maybe there are nine that were there or something. But um, I really wish we would have done this, um, you know, six weeks ago or something when we first started doing these webinars and I've then done it again now and then do it again, um, you know, two months from now or six months from now or three weeks from now and see what you all say. So, um, yeah, I think you're all right where you need to be. You're in different places and that's fine and uh, it'll all come together and, you know, different teams will form and, uh, but it sounds like the, the, the pieces of the puzzle are all there. So we'll just kind of figure out how to piece them all together. Um, so now let's uh, keep going down the list. And the next two people, I know Dylan's there. I'm not sure if Lou is online or not. Um, oh, I just see Sam join. So um, we'll let him get uh, situated a little bit and see if he can get his mic working and so on. And we'll come back to Sam and ask him to say a couple of words about what he's interested in. But um, let's first go to Dylan. Uh, Dylan was there, uh, was with us last year. And uh, obviously, she'll be with us again. So um, take it away, Dylan. Hi everyone, I'm Dylan. Um, I go to Clark University in Worcester and I just graduated this May and I majored in geography. Um, last year I worked a lot with Andy on the terrestrial survey um, and so I'm hoping to continue that more this year. Um, and last year when I went back to school after Polaris, um, I spent a lot of time using the field data and combined it with uh, satellite imagery and then did a lot of GIS and remote sensing stuff with that um, to make land cover maps and carbon estimation maps um, for terrestrial areas. So I'm hoping to continue that and expand on it a bit more this year. Um, so I'm excited to hear if people are interested in that uh, terrestrial stuff as well as GIS and remote sensing. And yeah, I think that's about it. I'm really excited to meet everyone. So see you guys soon. Thanks, Dylan. And you know, in addition to any of you asking questions anytime of me or the other, you know, the other faculty, um, certainly uh, Dylan and Luda 
and Travis can be fantastic resources as well as they've all had a lot of experience there. Uh, before we go to Luda, let's go back up to near the top of the list. Sam has been able to uh, get get this thing to work so we could log on. So Sam, if you could just say, you know, introduce yourself in a couple of words about uh, what, what you're thinking, what you're interested in. Hey guys, can you hear me? Uh, Alright, so I'm interested in looking at uh, ultraviolet uh, light and how it penetrates the water column. Um, well, Karen shipped over a, a BIC so we can measure how deep the light actually penetrates into the water column and how it regulates with different um, densities of dissolved organic material. And that's kind of been, once I started realizing like what you can actually do with equipment like that, it just kind of took off and that's really what I want to look at. Um, I'm also interested in looking at all sorts of other types of biogeochemistry in the uh, in the water column, especially on like nitrogen and phosphorus and um, other types of dissolved carbon, especially because phosphorus, from what I understand, is the real limiting factor in um, the bio biology of the water column. And so, yeah, that's it. I'm looking really forward to meeting everyone. I can't believe it's only four days away. Thanks, Sam. That, that's great. Have any of the other undergraduates who weren't here at the beginning joined. Uh, let me know if they have and I'll invite them to say a word. Uh, but in the absence of that, let's move down to Luda and have her say a few words. Let's see, is Luda still here? I think she was here and she could hear us, but maybe her microphone's not working. Um, I don't see her now. Um, is it working? Can you guys hear me? All right, sweet. Um, my name is Luda. Uh, I go to St. Olaf College in Minnesota. And I'm really interested in the terrestrial aquatic linkage. Uh, last summer, my project was focusing on how processes that uh, occur along hill slopes influence the form and concentration of carbon and nutrients that are available for transport into the small head streams of the big rivers. And I would really like to continue on that, and I have some ideas for how I want to build on that and um, use some other cool devices that we have, like temp loggers that were buried in the hill slope where I did my project last summer that have been there the whole year. So um, yeah, that's about it. Um, hopefully doing a lot of stuff with the terrestrial survey too. I think that would be great. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Luda. That's great. Um, I don't think Travis is here. And in just a second, we'll go to Dave, and he can say a few words. Um, but let's see, I noticed um, Varvara showed up. So Varvara, if you have a microphone after Dave goes, we'll go to you and see if if you know you can introduce yourselves, uh, yourself, and then I was also thinking, Mark Parasio, if you want to say a few words, you'd be welcome to. Even though I didn't get you on the list, um, Mark, you probably all know he's the high school teacher who will be with us, so maybe he could, you know, say just a couple things about what he's hoping to get out of this experience. So let's go to Dave now. Hi everyone, I'm Dave Mayer. I just finished my second year in the PhD program in geography at Clark University. I work for Professor Karen Fry. Uh, this summer in the field I'm going to be deploying a number of pressure and temperature sensors to uh, lakes and streams that will tell us about the seasonal changes in lake level and, and stream gauge or stream height. And I'll be pairing this up with remote sensing data to uh, get a better handle on uh, seasonal changes in storage. Uh, I'll also be working a little bit with the, uh, the optical instruments to understand what the, the light field is uh, in, these, uh, in these lakes and to, again, try to tie that to remote sensing to map things like uh, CDOM and, and uh, DOC. Thanks, Dave. Um, now, I'm not sure, let's see, Varvara, if you have a microphone, I'm going to turn mine off and we'll see if you can turn yours on and speak for a minute I'll, I'll, and, yeah, we'll see. Hello? 
Hey, Vavar, we can hear you. Um, yeah, maybe say a few words if, if your microphone is still working. Well, she's a long ways away, and uh, maybe the connection's not so good. So um, let's see. Have we missed anybody? Uh, Mark, again, if you'd like, um, you can jump in and speak, uh, or Vara, you can try again. Um, I'm going to turn mine off, and we'll see if Mark wants to say a word. Um, and I, I really, I'll open it up to anybody now who hasn't gone. Um, uh, another possibility would be Tom Quinn. Tom uh, works for um, Polar Field Services, or CPS. They go by different names. They're the NSF Arctic Logistics Contractor. So I've worked with Tom for a long time. Tom works all over the place. Um, and uh, but this will be the first time that we've gone to Chersky together. So I don't know, Tom, if you want to say anything, I'll I'll be quiet. Or if um, uh, also Mark can jump in and say something. Hi guys, it's Mark Paricio, and I'm uh, the Polar Trek teacher, a high school teacher, and I'm also an environmental engineer in addition to a physics and chemistry teacher. Um, I'm really excited about especially the linkages between um, how the carbon cycle and how the nutrients cycle from the terrestrial um, all the way down to the estuaries. Um, I'd love to help anybody. You know, I can be a good, I'm, I can be a good manual laborer. I can also help if you are interested in, in ideas. Um, but uh, I'd love to find out what you're doing and what you're thinking and, and where, your, where your lab designs are going. Um, so that I can kind of use those to teach students around in my school and in many other schools. Can't wait to meet you guys. That's perfect, Mark. Uh, manual labor and ideas is what we're all about working out there. Um, anybody else want to say anything? Um, I guess I'm going to go to the next slide, which is just really opening it up to anybody, questions about anything. You can ask questions about, you know, any comments that students have made about what their ideas are. You can ask about, you know, how many pairs of this, that, or the other to pack. Just anything that's on your mind, any concerns. We've already had some good questions, but um, yeah, go ahead and jump in. And, I, you know, I just wanted to say, I think I already said it, but it's, yeah, it's fantastic just hearing what you all have had to say so far. I'm, I'm, I've been incredibly excited and I'm even more excited now after hearing, hearing this discussion tonight. So I'll, uh, I'll be quiet for a while and see what people have to say. So does this indicate that everybody out there, uh, you know, is absolutely comfortable in what to pack and everything else? Let's see, Luda has a question. Um, hope the microphone is still working. I guess my question was about differences in the packing list from last year to this year. Um, specifically, last year we were told to bring a coffee mug and let's see what was the other thing. If we have a life jacket, then it might be nice to bring it because I own a life jacket, so I want to know if I should bring it. So that's it. Yeah, good questions, Luda. Uh, Coffee mug, we seem to have plenty of them there, so we are no longer recommending that. Um, people brought these really nice ceramic mugs that you know weighed about two pounds and cost us who knows how much to move across Russia. So yeah, no real re need to bring a coffee mug. If you do do it, bring a nice lightweight one. Um, let's see, what was the other thing? A life jacket. If you have a life jacket, it's not a bad thing to bring. If you have room in your bag, bring it. Um, one that's comfortable and fits you well. It's, you hopefully will have plenty of them there, but uh, yeah, it's nice to kind of have your own that you can, uh, you know, always have it available. Other questions? Uh, Logan has a critical question. I don't, you know, it's, um, I don't know if it's a good sign or not that most of the questions are focused on coffee, but I can at least relate to that. So um, what's a coffee situation? If you drink coffee, bring two pounds of ground coffee. 
Uh, we'll have various means of making it, yeah, you know, bring a French press, probably not. It, it won't be necessary. Yeah, Lou says no. We'll, we'll have, yeah, we'll have the means of, of bringing the coffee or bring it up, making the coffee, but, but bring it because we don't want to be stuck uh, buying our coffee in Cherisky. Fishing rod, ah, very good question. Yeah, if you like to fish, bring a, bring a rod. Um, a, you won't have a lot of opportunity to use it, but um, yeah, pack a fly rod and you'll, we'll get into some grayling on the Sahana River right up near the Arctic Ocean. Um, you know, try to keep it light again, but bring a rod if that's your thing. Yeah, bring and share, exactly. Maddie has a question about plane tickets. Do we pick up our plane tickets at the airport, or can we print them out online? Um, so your tickets from the U.S. to Moscow, I think you've all gotten the itineraries emailed to you, the, the e-ticket essentially. If you haven't gotten an e-ticket, let us know and we'll figure out what's going on. You should have gotten that from Commonwealth Travel. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll check, yeah, so let me know if you don't have an e-ticket. In terms of, okay, so the itinerary is the e-ticket. Um, it should be more than just the itinerary. It should be actually something that looks like a ticket. Um, so, yeah, let's... Uh, Maybe we'll find an example of what it looks like and send it around. And if you don't have that, let us know. In terms of tickets for travel within Russia, you won't see those until we get there. Um, yeah, and somebody's saying, I think some of the tickets went to people's spam filter. So let us know if you don't have something that actually looks like an e-ticket. It should be more than just a casual looking itinerary. Yeah, if you're, um, if you're driving a JFK, Let's just say you can't get there too early. Um, the the uh, price of getting there late is high in terms of stress and money and everything else. So you know, don't cut it close. Plan on we're going to spend a lot of time sitting in airports, getting to airports ridiculously early, and that's because the uh, you know the cost of missing a flight is very high. Yeah, we should bring. We'll have a bunch of deep with us. The, Pure stuff. Um, others should bring some too, but we'll uh, douse your in it since she can't buy the good stuff in Europe. Yeah, Mark, uh, there is an off site hotel. So there's a bunch of people flying in from the West Coast or from Colorado that will be taking red eyes in, arriving 6 a.m. in the morning or something in, at JFK. And instead of making you guys wait for who knows how many hours in the airport, um, we've booked a couple of two rooms in some hotel. You should have gotten the information about that from Janet Allen. So it's, uh, it's some hotel near the airport, I guess. There's one, one room for men, one room for women, and you can just pile in there and get a little bit of sleep before we, uh, you hop on the next red eye. So if you're one of those people on a red eye and you haven't received information about a hotel, email me or email Janet Allen, even better. Plug adapters at the station. Uh, we'll have a bunch of them, um, but it never hurts to bring more. Um, there are a couple of kinds that you can use. They're basically the two-prong round ones like in Europe. Um, so you know, if you have one of those available, bring it. Um, if not, we have a bunch. But by the end of the trip, you know, I don't know what happens to them. They get in short supply, though. We bring, you know, I keep thinking I'm going to saturate Siberia with plug adapters and Sharpies and AA batteries, but it hasn't happened yet. So if you have some a plug adapter handy, bring it. Um, yeah, GPSs, same thing as plug adapters. Yeah, you know, we brought a lot, but um, you, already, you can bring yours. I, maybe I wouldn't suggest the students bring GPSs, but um, you, already, you can do it. Yeah, flashlights. No flashlights aren't that necessary, although as Luda says, you know, a little bit of light in the building's not bad. But we, we will not see the sun go down, uh, I guess, during the whole time we're there. By the end of the time, it might nick the horizon, but that's about it. Uh, 
Alfonso, if you can't get tall rubber boots, are hip waders or waders acceptable? Um, oh boy. Uh, you don't want to bring heavy, big heavy waders um, just because of the weight. Um, hip boots, they, I mean, they're good for some things, but one way or another, let's figure out how to get you some rubber boots. I'm not sure uh, what that could be right now, but maybe we can talk email or something, maybe tomorrow morning, and maybe we, we do have some extra boots over there. Um, but yeah, rubber boots are uh, kind of, they're in that close to essential list because it's, you know, you're not just wearing them when you're wading into a stream or something. In fact, you're wearing them as your primary footwear in many cases. Uh, Lou is asking about filter paper and columns. Um, I'm not sure specifically which sorts of filters you're using. Um, we're bringing umpteen thousands of different kinds of filters, Lou, to Watman 42s. Uh, that may not be among the umpteen thousands that we're bringing. So yeah, that's yeah. If you can raid raid John's uh, some of John's. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure which. Well, yeah, raid John. It's kind of a weird conversation when you guys are all typing things in and I'm speaking. Max, can I can I walk us through a typical daily routine? Yeah, so we get up early. Um, I'm not sure what time that will be this year, but things get rolling. Yeah, six six thirty. We'll we'll decide on some time. Start drinking some coffee. Breakfast might be at well, people eat breakfast at different times, but officially it may be sort of. Yeah, I'm Haley Jackson. I'll play a little music to wake you up. Um, 8.30 or so breakfast. We have breakfast and we talk about plans for the day. I think this year we'll try to, before breakfast, get the sort of faculty group together. We have such a big group, I want to get um, the faculty together on a regular basis to kind of put our heads together and figure out what we're all doing. Um, then during breakfast we'll have a discussion with the whole group about what the plans are for the day. And then people disperse off in all different directions in boats and by foot. Uh, uh, in vehicles, but to a lesser degree in, in cars or trucks. Um, then most of us get back together at the at lunchtime. I can't remember what time lunch is, but uh, uh, but lunch is the one meal where there's some flexibility, and if people are busy, um, they can you know pack a lunch or something like that. But where we definitely all get to back together is at dinner time and kind of talk about what we did today and start planning for the next day. And um, but you know just during the Bulk of the day, people are in the field, they're in the lab, they're talking, making plans of activities, maybe in the evening before dinner, jumping in the river and going swimming, or, yeah, it's, there's, there's really no typical day except, you know, get together at breakfast and at dinner and generally at lunch. Other questions? Ah. Are we all sleeping on the bars? No, we're not all sleeping on the bars, Dave. But, um, they're, we're still kind of trying to finalize the plans of where everyone's sleeping. What it, what it looks like is that the new students will probably all be on the barge with Karen and with me. Um, most of the rest of the people will be in the Orbita. That's the, well, the lab building, the building with the big satellite dish on top. Um, and uh, then a few others will be dispersed around elsewhere. I can, I'll send the sort of the tentative list out soon. Um, yeah, and I'm looking at Paul's comment about his much more concise answer about what a typical day is: eat, work, swim, sleep. That's that's about right. Other questions, comments? Yeah, the sauna. Um, Paul or Yorin or uh, Karen, I guess Karen's there. Then, anyways, the people who know what to expect, if anyone wants to jump in and say a few words, I'm going to turn my mic off and, and you can do so. Hi, guys. Uh, this is uh, Paul, man. Um, not much to add from what. Max has uh, already said, I think he's done a pretty good job. Um, again, feel free to ask any questions you've got. I mean, it's not long now, so any questions for packing, um, 
the project ideas that you all came up with sounded fantastic. So uh, you should all be really happy with where you are. And um, in the first week, we will get up to scratch really, really quickly. And um, I think you'll all be having your own projects uh, underway, in the, in, certainly by the beginning of the second week, no problem. So I, I think well done. Um, and yeah, just feel free to contact us if there's any, any questions whatsoever. Um, in terms of the BIC, um, this is that light instrument that a few people have been talking about. Um, it would be good if we could hear maybe, not, not necessarily tonight, but maybe you could email um, myself and we, we could talk about if there's anything else that you may need. Um, I think, is it me? Uh, Sam, I think, that mentioned that he was interested in using the BIC. Um, for some experiments. So we might need to pack some extra things in our bag, so it would be good to hear about that. Um, other than that, you know, I, I really look forward to seeing you all in the airport, and um, yeah, uh, enjoy your last few days, and uh, uh, you'll have a great time. So yeah, don't worry. Thanks. All right, well, everyone's done a great job. We're keeping on time. It looks like we're going to end on time. Anyone can jump in now if they have any you know, final questions or comments, but if not, I'll just uh, say a few more words and wrap things up. Um, you know, when we all uh, take off on Tuesday, or some of us leaving Monday night, we're sort of entering this three or four day stretch of you know, very little sleep, jet lag like you've never imagined. Um, waiting in airports, moving through traffic in Moscow. It's just this incredibly grueling, really exciting time. Um, people's patience can be tried. But yeah, that's right. It, it does sound awful, but it's also, a, you know, it's a kind of an amazing part of this um, whole adventure where, you know, we all kind of show up in JFK and don't really know each other, and four days later we've all been through hell together, and it really helps bring the group together. So I guess I'm just sort of, you know, anticipate feeling grumpy, um, anticipate being really tired, anticipate being hot, anticipate being cold, uh, but it's all really a wonderful part of the experience and you'll uh, look back on it fondly. So uh, um, I think I will uh, just thank you all for participating and uh, let's all, let's go back to thinking about what we're forgetting to pack. Thanks everybody. <laughs>